Well, the whole question of nephrectomy in RCC has been puzzling. If you go back to when Dean Gesme and I were young Turks, um, people would occasionally do a nephrectomy in a patient with locally advanced renal cancer and some metastases, and you'd do the nephrectomy only for pain control because in those days we didn't have effective systemic treatment. And then once in a while, you'd say, man, that's really strange. We took the primary tumor out, and the metastases just seemed to have stopped growing. Or even more surprisingly, occasionally they would completely regress. I think now with the wisdom of understanding how immunotherapy works, what we were doing was removing a big volume load and allowing the immune system to target smaller volumes of metastatic disease. That gave rise later on at the time when we were using interferon as relatively ineffective systemic treatment to a randomized trial that asked the question, does nephrectomy matter? And that was carried out by SWOG. Uh, SWOG has done so many major trials that have influenced management. And this trial showed that if you actually did a nephrectomy prior to systemic management improved outcomes, if your systemic uh, treatment was something that was relatively ineffective. Then Magian and colleagues did a study with the advent of the new targeted therapies where they looked at nephrectomy and found that in fact, the patients who were randomly allocated to nephrectomy plus targeted therapeutics did no, didn't offer any survival benefit compared to systemic therapy alone. And my guess, and I'm not a, a real expert in this space, but my guess is it has to do with the fact that we now had effective targeted treatments that made a different to, difference to systemic disease. I have to say, and I mentioned it in a recent editorial in Hemont today, it's a, a monthly journal that John Sweeten and I, and I edit. Uh, I made the comment that at the ASCO GU meeting, there was a presentation and no need to target the people who did it because it, it was well intended, but it was presented at an oral uh, session on GU, which suggested that in a retrospective post hoc analysis, where they'd looked at people who'd had nephrectomy uh, and targeted therapies versus targeted therapies alone, that nephrectomy mattered. And I was struck by the fact that it was a small study, definitely merited presentation, but it was a small study, it was retrospective, it didn't allow for case selection bias, and it just struck me that so often at meetings, people will see what seems like a step forward. And at program committee, they go, yahoo, a step forward, without really looking at the study and saying, is this a good study or a bad study? Perfectly reasonable for that to be presented uh, in a poster as a hypothesis generating study saying, maybe we need to ask the question again. But to put it forward as a major presentation challenging a peer-reviewed prospective large randomized trial just gave me pause. And what I would say is when I see my next renal carcinoma patient at the Charlotte VA system, I will not be jumping to do a nephrectomy. I would tend to be influenced by the Magian study, which says, let's give systemic treatment a trial and see how we do. I might think differently if there's a big local complication that relates to pain in an otherwise fit patient, then you're actually looking for rapid palliation. Unfortunately, in my practice, I don't see an awful lot of renal cancer these days, but I see enough to see errors that some of my colleagues at other centers make. And I've seen a couple of patients who had nephrectomies done completely inappropriately, uh, thinking that they would somehow make a difference where frontline systemic therapy might well have saved the patient. The patient post nephrectomy was never well enough to have systemic treatment, and it was a, a bad error of judgment, in my opinion.